I'm Mike Neundorfer with Advanced RV, and this is Mike Griffiths, yeah. also with Advanced RV. We get a lot of questions uh, in phone calls and on the internet and uh, other feedback uh, asking, should I buy my own chassis? What about a transit? How long is it gonna take to get to the, the Sprinter? Uh, what options should I get on the Sprinter? Can I get the, the color I want? So today we're gonna try to answer some questions about how our clients acquire the chassis that are appropriate for our builds. The way we start with a client that comes with a need is we, we start by uh, asking what their objectives are, what their travel objectives are, or what their use objectives are. A lot of that would be what they wanna put inside of it and on it and in it. Um, that's gonna really dictate kind of what chassis to build on as far as the weight capacities go, as far as the length goes. Are you looking for a 144, a 170, a 170 extended, four or two wheel drive? Those are the main starting points when building a chassis. This is a 170 inch wheelbase. That means from the center of the front wheel to the center of the back wheel is 170 inches. There are two models on the 170. One is a standard and the other is an extended, which has 16 more inches of length, which is used by clients for storage. Uh, we put boxes under the back for storage. There's more room for bikes in the rear or whatever. There's also a 144 inch chassis. So the 144 is 26 inches shorter than the 170 in wheelbase. That does a couple things. It's almost five feet shorter in interior space than the 170. But the other thing it does is, as with any short wheelbase vehicle, like when I was a kid, I had a, a CJ5 Jeep. Didn't bother me as a teenager, but it had a lot of front to back pitch because the wheelbase didn't smooth that out. But off the road, it was awesome. And so the 144 is a choice of people that are fairly seriously going off the road. The 144 is appealing because it's short and it's maneuverable. And if you were the type of person who had a really active lifestyle and you wanted to get your van into a lot of really cool places, like right down to the beach or into some mountain trails, uh, a 144 four wheel drive especially would be really a unique choice. But you start to realize that uh, there's limitations. And uh, one of the big limitations is living space. It's the difference between a 170 extended and a 144 internal length is about five feet, which is significant. The 170 extended is about 16 feet long inside, give or take, and 144 is a lot less. There's so much interest these days in tiny houses and tiny motorhomes. Every time we build a 144, it was a completely new design challenge. It seems like every time somebody comes in for a 144, they've got a very unique idea and a set of specifications, and everyone gets created a lot different than the one that came in before. And I, I really don't think we've done two 144s that have been really close to each other. The trade-off then in the 144, uh, and, and it's not a tr necessarily a trade-off, the things that are important to people are some people, a bathroom and a, and a flush toilet, uh, a significant amount of water and gray and black capacity, battery capacity. Some people are interested in a refrigerator. Some want to use a microwave. And uh, the bed is important to a lot of people. Me. Mitchell, are we done filming? No, Mike. We got some more work to do. Oh, boy. this It's going to be hard to get out of this bed. I love Dugan's bed. Just give me a few minutes. I'm going to take a little power nap here. Dugan was designed and purchased by a couple who wanted to travel with their bicycles. And they wanted a very comfortable bed. They wanted a quality refrigerator. And beyond that, they just wanted enough battery to be off the grid for a day or so. These are the kinds of choices that people make. And we have to kind of get a sense for how you want to travel. People say, well, I want to be able to park it anywhere. Well, um, Every, everybody has a different level of comfort with parking. And if you want to park this in a target parking lot in one spot, the 144 probably works. I personally never had any problem finding a parking space for the 144, the 170, or the 170 extended. A typical parallel parking spot is 25 feet long. And 170 extended is just a little over uh, 24 feet, 24 feet one inch. I don't think we've ordered any chassis yet that haven't been fully loaded. And that includes the power seats, the LED headlights, the larger monitor with navigation, 
The power sliding door is, is pretty popular. And it's a really a toss up between two and four wheel drive. It's really a, a user preference. Four by four in any of the models sacrifices between one and a half and two miles per gallon. So it's not an insignificant reduction in, in fuel mileage with the four by four. Uh, the four by four is higher, so you're sitting up a, a noticeably higher. A uh, little more ground clearance between the chassis and the ground, actually three and a half inches more. The other thing is the four x four, because of the transfer box and some of the other equipment, starts out 300 pounds heavier. One of the critical things, since we're a Mercedes master upfitter, we pay attention to the weight that we can put in these vans. We need to have our total weight of the vehicle come in way below the GVRW so that we can put people and gear in there and still be legal on the road. And there's a weight restriction on both the front axle and the rear axle. So the front axle in the 4x4 has uh, roughly 300 pounds more starting weight. So it gives us a little less flexibility, it gives our clients less flexibility about the build. The same holds true with the difference between the 2500 and the 3500. Your 2500 Mercedes is likely equivalent to like what we would consider a three quarter ton uh, domestic truck like a Ford F-250 and uh, the 3500 would be like a one ton truck like a Ford F-350. So it's just a different weight rating. When you buy a 2500 series Mercedes Benz, uh, you get single rear wheels and it also has a reduced weight carrying capacity as opposed to the 3500. The 3500 comes with dual wheels. Now there is some areas where a 2500 would be a van that you would choose. If you would wanted to build like say a day traveling camper with a refrigerator and maybe seating for four or five people and you know you weren't gonna be sleeping in it or you weren't gonna be having the need for a restroom and we could definitely do it on a 2500. There's some maybe some different ride characteristics with just a single tire van on the 2500. We do a weight spreadsheet as we build these as close as we can so that we can predict how much weight we're putting in these custom vans for clients. We have a pretty good idea as we're configuring how much weight people are adding to meet their objectives and we try to balance out their objectives with the practicality of building a van that has good uh, difference between the built weight and the GVRW for adding uh, water and people and gear. Our clients prefer the Sprinter. We think in the past that that's been because of weight and capacity. It's been because the Sprinter or the 170s have a longer wheelbase, so you less, have less overhang in the back. Uh, the uh, Transit has some benefit in that it's a little wider and it has more engine options. Personally, I like the Transit. One of the biggest differences about the Transit that excites me is the availability of more powerful engines than are available in the Sprinter which to me translates to driving pleasure. Also, the Transit has an all-wheel drive system available, which is different than a four-wheel drive system that's available on the Sprinter. The big difference between the Ford Transit and uh, Mercedes van, in my opinion, is the, uh, is the availability of a low-range transfer case. And what we're looking at right here is the uh, actual four-wheel drive system. And Mercedes uh, goes, uh, a great distance to provide a very high quality and uh, uh, tested four-wheel drive system. And like I said, it does have the available low range, which makes uh, pulling a boat or backing up a steep incline, or you just want a controlled vehicle at a slow speed, allows you to have the low range. And uh, so this, this uh, system is very nice. and It's actually built like a heavy duty truck. Whereas the Ford Transit is more of just an all wheel drive uh, vehicle. Usually an all-wheel drive system is always on or can be activated as needed. Um, a four-wheel drive vehicle has a much more robust transfer case with gears and chains and is uh, designed for rougher service. And so uh, the Mercedes has the actual transfer case and then drive shafts that go front and rear. Sometimes an all-wheel drive vehicle will have the transmission will be a front wheel drive vehicle with just a, a drive shaft that sends to the back. The Transit is a good vehicle. We have no problem building on the Transit. The Dodge is a different kind of vehicle. We would build on a Dodge. It's uh, the 3500 anyway. We haven't had a client ask us to do that yet. Most of our clients choose a Sprinter chassis, but we're building on uh, 650 Ford chassis. We're building on uh, Morgan Olson, uh, the food truck kind of chassis. 
we worked and modified on the Dodge chassis and uh, certainly the Transit chassis. We are pleased to take a, a chassis, new or used, from anyone that wants uh, us to do a custom build and build on it. Uh, the benefit that we can offer, though, is that we're a master outfitter from Mercedes. We're also a fleet, have fleet status with Mercedes, and we've established a fleet status pricing from Transit. So with these chassis, we can purchase them significantly less than what anybody, even a good negotiator, can usually purchase them through a dealership. So there is a significant amount of money to be saved by purchasing through our fleet uh, number, our fleet uh, status. And so what we do is, we, it, all that savings on the chassis, we just put that as gross margin as we calculate it on our build, and that saves the client money. What about schedule, Mike? Uh, can people beat the schedule by uh, buying direct? So yeah, we do get a little bit of priority over say a normal dealer ordering a van because we are a fleet customer. It's not a vehicle that may sit on a lot for who knows how long. So we do get a priority level. In fact, they consider it priority one over most dealerships. Mercedes-Benz, especially in 2019, their chassis deliveries were lacking. Um, they had tremendous amount of challenges both with the new plant and the new model year but uh, they're coming around the bend on that I think their deliveries are starting to pick up they were trying to make sure that there were no quality issues as you would normally get in a new model year unit. This conversation isn't complete until we talk about how long it takes us to build a custom motorhome and that includes uh, uh, the process uh, the client goes through for deposit and then coming in to configure and by the time we get the chassis in and and get through our production queue we're talking uh, between probably 13 and 15 months right now of uh, lead time is that yeah that's that's accurate okay and that's dependent on mercedes-benz delivery but fingers crossed that's that's on its upswing I hope this video cleared up some things on, on ordering your chassis and uh, how we build and where we fit in uh, the full range of possibilities for motorhomes and other mobile function vehicles. And we look forward to hearing from you, we look forward to your questions, and we look forward to building your mobile application, your motorhome, if you'll honor us with that possibility. Be glad to chat with anybody about chassis questions as well. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for listening.